Cocaine hippos are threatening Colombia. Release the Kraken! <laughs> You see, back in the 1980s, drug kingpin Pablo Escobar, not to be confused with Pablo Escobar and our barn cat. So Pablo Escobar, when he was at the height of his awful drug smuggling days, he had this estate down in Colombia. And on that estate, he did all sorts of lavishy drug dealery type things. And one of the things that he wanted to do on his estate is he built a zoo. So he smuggled all sorts of animals from all over the world, including a bunch of hippopotamuses. And after Pablo Escobar was killed by drug enforcement officials in the 1990s, the authorities took the various animals on his estate and dispersed him to various sanctuaries and zoos. But the four hippopotamuses that he had smuggled in, they were a little bit of a different story. You see, hippopotamuses, are very large and rather scary and kind of hard to control. And so after attempting to try to capture the hippopotamuses, the authorities just kind of said, eh, and the hippopotamuses just sort of started to wander free. And now, for those of you guys who are not familiar with hippopotamuses, I should take a moment to talk just a little bit about them for some context for you. Number one, hippopotamuses are huge. They're one of the largest land mammals upon the planet Earth. Number two, hippopotamuses are also pretty ferocious. They are the most deadly land animal on the continent of Africa. And hippopotamuses are also not native to South America. Naturally speaking, hippopotamuses are actually only found in sub-Saharan Africa. And so living in the wilds of Colombia, these cocaine hippopotamuses that came from Pablo Escobar's estate were not inside their natural habitats. Morning, goslings. Pretty soon, little ones, I'm gonna let you go wander the wilds of the farm. And while temperature-wise, Sub-Saharan Africa is somewhat similar to Colombia, from a climate perspective, they're actually very different. Sub-Saharan Africa has periods of heavy rainfall and then drought. So generally speaking, there's not a lot of long-term, permanent, year-round, ponds and lakes that exist in sub-Saharan Africa. But Colombia has lots of year-round rainfall, heavy vegetation growth, and year-round ponds and lakes. And the ponds and lakes are very abundant. Still no hatchlings. And so the climate of Colombia is absolutely perfect for the growth of the hippopotamus populations. And then to top it all off, the hippopotamus has no natural predators or no significant competition when it comes to other animals in the habitats of Colombia versus the other animals in sub-Saharan Africa. And so that means that the populations of the Colombian hippos has absolutely exploded. They went from the four original hippos that were on Pablo Escobar's estate to now where the estimates are somewhere around 80 hippos wandering in the wild as well as on the estate of Pablo Escobar in Colombia. How's it going in there, Mother Goose? Any progress? She's still sitting on that nest, but no babies yet. <laughs> and the fact that the hippopotamus population in Colombia is exploding like that in a wild and unmanaged way is actually ecologically concerning. Come here, Toby Dog. That's for you, kid. You see, ecosystems are very fragile and carefully balanced systems. Over the course of tens and thousands and millions of years, they have developed very carefully and slowly through a combination of climate and weather, geological factors, plant life, insect life, herbivores, carnivores, and they all work together and co-evolve together to create the delicate balance of what that ecosystem actually is. And when you go to a fragile ecosystem like Colombian rainforests and introduce a massive new megafauna into that environment, it can cause all sorts of problems. You know, animals like the tapirs or giant otters or the manatees were able to evolve and find their ecological niche without the existence of the hippopotamus. The introduction of the hippopotamus just creates chaos for them. And then when you add into the fact that 
when it comes to hippopotamuses and their roles in the African landscape, their role is actually to be ecosystem shapers. Their manure offers a lot of fertilizer. Their wallowing activity creates seasonal ponds and pools that support other animals. And when you introduce those factors into a landscape like you have in Colombia, that can cause all sorts of issues. So there are a lot of biologists out there who are labeling the cocaine hippopotamuses as a major invasive species for Colombia. Because without any constraints on their growth, it's currently on a trajectory where it is skyrocketing and could do some major damage when their populations get to scale. But the hippopotamuses are actually doing something very good for the local people in that area. You see, Pablo Escobar's estate was turned into a theme park and lots of tourists actually like to go there now and check it out. And to me, one of the funniest things about this theme park is that it's like very branded Jurassic Parky, like all the signage and lettering and fonts they're using all have that Jurassic Park vibe. Which if you're looking for an on the nose metaphor for the situation, might not be that far off. But you see the tourists that are attracted by the hippopotamuses are bringing money into the economy of this town. And so there is an economic good that the hippopotamuses are doing. So while it might be very easy to say, hey, you should just go out there and eradicate the hippo populations in Colombia, the local people are really uncomfortable with that idea. And as far as my personal view on the situation, I got to admit I'm very conflicted about it because I can completely understand and appreciate the ecological damage that these animals might be doing but as an american farmer that's kind of like the pot calling the kettle black because if you want to talk about the most invasive species of animal on this planet you have to look no further than the human being Sheesh! we humans started somewhere in africa and we have spread pretty much across the entire world shaping and sculpting the environment to match our whims everywhere we go just look at me and what i'm doing here on our farm right we brought in invasive honeybees that are originally from Italy. We've cut down forests to create open pasture and then planted certain varieties of trees that we like because they provide food. We've shaped and sculpted the landscape to capture water and match our whims. We've introduced animals like chickens who are actually descendants of jungle fowl or brought on special breeds of dogs to scare away the natural predators of this landscape. Or we've brought on special breeds of geese who occur naturally in this environment, but when they do, they're in the migratory form like the Canada goose. They were never meant to live here year round like they do here on our farm. And while you might say what I'm doing here at Goldshaw Farm is a relatively small scale, so it doesn't matter. Don't forget that American agriculture is why we have lots of wild hogs running rampant across the Southern portion of the country. So when it comes to American farmers in invasive species, this is really an us problem. Now I'm not gonna say I'm as bad as Pablo Escobar, but I guess what I am saying is that what we're doing with the farm isn't drastically different, you know? Hang on, kid. Sit tight, sit tight, sit tight. I have started to brush Toby every single day and I'm still getting these gigantic clumps. Hang on, kid. I think being a good farmer is about being a good steward to the land. And I think being a good human is actually about being a good steward to the land. Like you have a responsibility within either role. I think the farmer's job is just much larger. And so yes, here on our farm, we do introduce invasive animals and plants and shape the landscape versus what it naturally was. That actually displaces wild animals and changes what the landscape looks like for them and what they have to work with. But I also think we try to provide value and try to create something that's sustainable. And I think as long as you're kind of focusing on that intention, that makes all the difference. So no, I don't think I'm actually worse than Pablo Escobar, but <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm like wildly different either. How are you doing there, Mr. Toby Dog? We're almost through with this. Stop. Sit tight, sit tight. 
I think finding a way for your impact as well as the impact of the plants and animals that you introduce to an ecosystem is the job of a responsible farmer. And so yeah, clearly Pablo Escobar was not a responsible farmer. I think for the people of Colombia, if they were to take the steps that need to be taken where the populations of these cocaine hippopotamuses are managed sustainably, I think it could potentially work. But I think that's something that's really hard to do and do it in a way that doesn't go awry or create new problems or issues for that ecosystem. Hey, look, those folks are eating all their crops. <laughs> if you guys found this topic interesting, you might want to learn about why I enjoy the fact that we have coyotes around the farm. So check out that video over there and I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching.